Thanks for tuning in to part two of this stencil series that I'm doing. And today we're going to finish the cards that we created the backgrounds for just a few days ago. If you haven't seen part one, you may want to do that first and I'll link it here. But let's get started with our stencils, shall we? I had so much fun making these backgrounds that I can't wait to make them into cards today with you. Thanks for joining me on this fantastic journey, including card crafting. All right, so first let's take this one, and if you recall, we added some of the flowers onto a scrap piece of paper so that we could give it some more dimension. And I just swiped some of the ink and then used the stencil to use my picked raspberry and make the outline. And so I'm just fussy cutting this out so that we can attach it to the card base or to the background piece. And then we'll pop it up with some foam tape so that we can give this a little bit more dimension. And if you haven't watched part one of this two-part series, I will include that at the end of the video and also in the description box below in case you're watching this on your TV. Okay, so I've got those two pieces cut out. Now we will work on putting a sentiment on the outside of the card as well. And I'm gonna just use some of my memento black ink and I'm taking out my birthday sayings. If any of you watched my craft area renovation video, you understand why everything are all my stamps are in these little boxes. It's the way I keep them organized even though it doesn't look very organized here. I have more birthday sayings than anything else, but I have some of my favorites. This one I haven't used very often, so this one will be a fun one to add to this card. And I like using my memento black ink. Uh, it makes really nice sharp images and I don't have to worry about it. I still use this instead of a block because it does make a better image. It's a little safer for me. <laughs> then I'm just going to put some border to create a border on here by cutting this paper down a little bit and I had plenty of space to to do this with. It's a little bit easier for me to do this at the end especially if you are a little off center with your stencils or something else, it's nice to do that. And you guys know I don't like to measure too much, so I just kind of eyeballed that and I'm gonna cut this green paper down a little bit as well. And that cream colored paper is my card base, so I'm just kind of doing a little bit of measuring there and I'll use my paper trimmer to cut this paper down. Since it was a, some muted colors, I really liked this green background and then I'm gonna quarter punch just two of the corners, two opposite corners. And then I decide that I also wanna do that to the green sheet as well. Sometimes I like the, that look, it looks a little bit different. I didn't have too much going on in those two corners either, so I like the way that looked. I decided to do it with the card base as well, since I haven't done the inside of the card base yet. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to tape the paper down to the green paper. And you can technically tear this, but I, whatever I do it, I make kind of a mess. So I just use my scissors that I keep for sticky stuff. I'm gonna measure that again, just make sure I have it going the right direction. And just so you know, you can really use any papers, colors, stencils. This was really a couple of videos just to show you how much fun you can have with stencils. Because like I said, I get them at the dollar store. I get them on Amazon. You can get a whole bunch for just a few dollars. You can find them in a lot of places. This dollar store, they're real inexpensive. Now they're fairly cheap. As you saw, I had a little trouble with some of them because they're fairly thin. So I'm sure there's better quality out there if you're willing to spend a little bit more but uh, I do this just for fun. I do this to make cards for my friends and family, so no need for me to spend more than I need to with stencils when these work perfectly fine for me. As you know, I like to tie in the inside of the card with the outside of the card, so I'm gonna tape off some of this so I don't make a mess. Uh, I'm known to think I can get away with not taping <laughs> it up and then getting all sorts of extra shapes on my card and since this is the card base and I've already done this saying on the inside of the card I might as well play it safe. So this stencil it's just the outline uh, so you see there I got the outline and then I'm going to want to add some of the leaves and I'm still using Distress Oxide inks 
and this is the bundled sage that I'm using here. I just put a couple leaves on either side because I had the room, even though it's a pretty good sized saying, it gives me plenty of room here. And I'm just using a little brush and I'm being pretty careful so that I don't get extra stuff on here that I don't want. And then I decided to put a little bit of greenery at the other corner. I always try and leave the left top corner and the bottom right corner fairly blank because that's usually where I put my two saying and then in the bottom right corner is where I usually say love Jen or you know happy birthday or whatever I say. So here I'm going to just use a pencil real quick and I'm just going to turn these petals so it gives it a little more dimension as well and then we'll pop this up on some foam tape and you'll be able to see the one that I stamped underneath it so no need to worry that it's going to be off the card a little bit. And I'm cutting my foam tape because I do want to put part of each of the petals down so I put some foam tape on the back of this. I cut some of that out so you didn't have to sit through it. And then I'm going to do that with this second one as well. And that just gives it a kind of a different look. It's nice and simple, not too much dimension. And then I'm using my Ranger Matte Finish Glue. Glue that down. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't dry as fast as my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And then I decided I'm going to put a few gems on here just to jazz it up a little bit. In the centers of these flowers, I use different sizes and different shades of pink. Hard to tell from the camera angle, but... And I do try and use my wax tipped pen, but I have trouble with it, so I just always end up going back to my reverse tweezers here. I love these little craft tweezers. So some small ones, some mediums, and one large one. This gives it a little shine, and I think that came out cute. All right, on to this big, beautiful flower. I loved this flower, and so I didn't want to do a too big of a sentiment. You can see that this pad of paper, I just flipped through it so you could see the other colors I had in there, but I'm going to go with a silver since I used Winka Stella that has a, a silvery sheen to it. And I'm going to use some of my tape to just keep that tape down. It's a low tack tape made by Scotch. Pop this little sentiment out, and then this will be a fairly simple card, but I really like how that turned out with all that Winka Stella and how we popped that flower up a little bit from the leaves in the background. And that's the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, which is great for these little teeny tiny sentiments. And then uh, I thought it was a little bit plain, so I'm using this ruler that has, it's more for tearing paper. I can use it too for creating a little bit of a border, and I used a silver pen. And this is just more for fun than anything to give it a little bit of interest could certainly do without this. This wasn't necessary. This was just me. Sometimes I can't go in and I can't seem to stop with a card. So uh, if you don't know how to stop like me, then you'll know why we do these kinds of things. It's just fun to add little bits of interest. Sometimes it looks good. Sometimes it doesn't. That I could take it or leave it. But I did like all that shimmer with the Winka Stella on the whites of that flower. Okay, this one I fast forwarded because my camera actually ran out of battery, but here's what I did with it. So I stamped that sentiment with some black ink, it's black pigment ink, and then I put some black embossing powder on it and made it nice and shiny. Here I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and I'm putting it on a blue card base, making sure that gets all nice on there. Put it on a white card base then I'm going to use that Ranger glue with the matte finish. And I always include everything that I've used that I can still find. I buy a lot of my things on Amazon or from Stampin' Up! or things like that. So it's a lot of stuff though from the dollar store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, those kinds of places. So if I can't find where I found it, then I won't put it in there. Or sometimes I'll find something similar and I'll always put the word similar in it so that you know it's not exactly what I used. But I do that just to help you out. I'm not monetized. I'm not part of any of those organizations. I just do it to make it easy for you because I know if I watch people's crafting videos, sometimes I'm like, ooh, I'd really like one of those. And it's really easy if they have the link included. So I just added some gems here for some additional interest. And I like how that looks. 
then of course I keep going because that's just my personality. <laughs> I can't really leave well enough alone, but I wanted to, it was a, too, a little bit too symmetrical, so I wanted to put some extras on the outliers. And then I decided I wanted to make this card edges look like the picture itself or the focal point itself. So just using my Tim Holtz small scissors to cut those out. And sometimes I like when a card is not exactly the, the shape that it normally would be. So here I'm using my Nora metallic pens. It's, it's nice, it's got two tips. It's got a fine tip and then a marker type tip and just adding some color on the inside again to tie it in. So there's purple and there's blue on the outside. So I'm using purple and blue here and I'm doing this real fast. So it's not anything where I'm spending a lot of time. Just kind of like the way I tie the two in. So there's that card all finished up and I really like how that came out as well. Okay, the next card. This was my card base that I wasn't sure I was going to like because I did put a lot of red ink on there. And so I'm going to make some big sentiments. I'm not quite sure what color I want them in. I don't have a lot of card stock that matches uh, some of these Distress Oxides, but I'm going to try this yellow and this bluish teal color and we'll see what that comes out like. And I will tell you, I had to cut out <laughs> probably 45 minutes of, of time because these little teeny tiny pieces in these dies almost, <laughs> almost did me in. So I just had to kind of line them all up and I took everything out and I put them all in little piles, but then there's, you know, the happy and the birthday. And so it took me quite a while to put all those little pieces together and I should have really thought about that before I started. I would have been more strategic about finding the little pieces and keeping them together. And then what I did is I took some of my removable tape and I just put it on the outside so then I don't lose those pieces as I'm kind of placing it and deciding where I want to go. So I really thought I was going to like this yellow and blue color. But as I put it on there, I just for some reason didn't love it. So even though this blue isn't the color of the blue in the background, I actually liked this a little bit better. And then, so here I'm using some of my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue just to kind of put a little dot on each piece because I don't want those two pieces to separate when I put the foam tape on there. So they're just gonna adhere to that foam tape a little bit better. And I'm gonna pop this Happy Birthday up and this really didn't help out my situation with all the extra red ink in the background, but because it's such a prominent part of the card, I don't think it's a big deal anymore. Then I take out my pencil that has this eraser and I decided I wanted to add some red, but then I forgot I had the removable tape on the happy and the birthday. So we got that off and I decided to use this pencil eraser and just very gently tapped on some of that ink and some of them I made them I pushed a little harder so it was a full dot and then some of them they're hollow dots and some are half dots. So I wanted it to look just a little bit messy, fun. I wanted to tie that red color in there. I think that's candied apple. So now that I did that on the outside and I kind of went crazy with it but I really sort of <laughs> liked how fun that looked. Then I decided um, I might need to do this on the card base as well. So you know how I don't like to measure. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it and making some hollow, some partial, and just having a little bit of fun with this. So this I cut out a whole bunch as well because I didn't want you guys to have to watch me put dots all over. I made an envelope as well. I put some dots on the back, some dots on the front. And then I went in and used all three of the colors, all the Distress Oxide colors. I included all the colors in the last video on each card and I will try and do that in this one as well. So then I decided, you know what, I really like these dots so much I'm going to put some all over the card and this might get rid of the very prominent candied apple color. And then we put the Twisted Citron inside the card and on the envelope as well. I showed this card to my daughter and she was like, that is so fun. And that's exactly the look I was going for, fun. This could actually be a male or a female card and it also could be a kid card if you wanted it to be. So I left the inside blank because it could really go for anybody. So I'd like to keep it so when the time arises, I have a card ready to go and a really cute envelope as well. That was super easy. Now, these are the card bases that we didn't have time to do anything with, but I wanted to show you what I wanted to do with them. On the green one, I'd put some flowers in it. On this one, I'd put some washi tape. And then the last one, I think I'd use that to cut out a shape, cut out a die with it. And these are all my cards. 
So if you haven't already, please watch part one. I'm putting the link here. If you're watching on TV, I'll put it in the description box below. Thanks for joining me today on this fantastic journey. If you enjoyed this content, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you can see future content. And to be notified about future content, you're going to want to hit the notification bell. And again, check out that description box. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And I will see you in the next card crafting video.